What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show off this crazy little cellular automata that I built a few months ago that I call nth dimensional evolutionary automata or NDA for short. And I'm going to start this video off by just showing you this simulation. And there we go, it's done. You've seen how your simulation runs. I will show it again later in the video, but for right now, let's just go through some of the code and explain how the automaton works. When I released my Civilization Simulator 2 video, a lot of people really liked it, and a lot of them sort of compared it to Conway's Game of Life. And I thought it was funny because originally I was thinking, why don't I just implement Conway's Game of Life you know, instead of making a civilization simulator. Uh, but, you know, obviously I ended up making that other project. But that had gotten me thinking, why don't I make my own cellular automata? Uh, you know, how hard could it be, right? So cellular automata is this classification of algorithms, specifically ones that people like to watch. So you have a big old grid, or you have essentially what is like a lot of little doodads around the screen. And they sort of interact with each other somehow. And it's, you look at them sort of like as cells li that live and die and breathe and, you know, do whatever cells do while they're around before they blink out of existence. And Conway's Game of Life is probably the most famous example of cellular automata there is. You can get some pretty crazy mathematical weird mumbo jumbo stuff. I don't pretend to understand it, but it's cool and I wanted to make my own. So I decided I wanted to do away with something more grid-based and I wanted to go into, I really wanted to lean into that evolutionary algorithm aspect because I had just rented a library book on evolutionary algorithms. I wanted to test out what I had learned. So let's go through the code real quick. I implemented this in Ruby using the Ruby 2D library to get graphics because I wanted to, I just discovered it, why not? Uh, so yeah, this is just like little setup code to set up a little window. And then this is like our little update loop. We can update a tick in our simulation. And then if everyone's dead, you say all dead. And then otherwise, you just keep on going. So this is all the real code. Everything else was like boilerplate. Uh, we've only got two classes. We just have cell up here. And then we've got, where is it? Simulation right down over here. Nothing too fancy. Uh, so simulation, essentially, we can define mutation rate, we can define the length of the window, and we can define what color we want our little cell doodads to be. So every update loop inside the simulation. Okay, so we're basically just going to loop over all the cells. We're going to update each one by some delta time. And if there's more than one cell occupying the same spot, then they're just going to die. One of them's gonna die until there's there's one left. And then if it's dead, you know, so remove from the list, uh, blah, 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 basic stuff. Uh, and so this is the fitness function for our evolutionary algorithm. Now, I call it nth dimensional evolutionary automata because there's some fitness function, and I know it's only two dimensional, but the point is this algorithm is generalizable to as many dimensions as you want. I just got bored of it before I could put it into like six dimensions or something. So, uh, you know, it, it stuck around as 2D because I want to debug it and I want to take a look at what it looked like on this 2D plane. So we have some random uh, function here. I think this is like distance from the center of the map, but eh, I don't know. I can't remember. Who cares? You know, the fitness function doesn't really matter. Just whatever you want to put in there, put in there and see how it functions. All right, so cells, they got a little fitness. Uh, they're a little circle somewhere with like radius 15 pixels. And here's that simulation color. So that actually does define the color of these little cells. And then with update, you set up a timer. So cells, they will gain a probability to reproduce 
every time the timer goes up. And you know, if the probability is high enough, eventually they'll produce an offspring. This is a evolutionary algorithm after all, so taking inspiration from real single cellular life, you are eventually going to have to bud off some offspring to keep the species going. And then, you know, there's some actions here. Uh, you could die if you want. Uh, there's mating, and well, that's it. Uh, and this way you can calculate distance, you can get older neighbors around you, and you can define if you are indeed equal to another cell next to you. So what's the real algorithm behind this automata program? So the entire algorithm is actually driven by whether or not these cells can mate because, you know, you gotta pass the genes on to the next offspring. So whenever this probability value gets too high, eventually you will end up mating. And so all this mate code down here, if you don't have any neighbors around you and you decide to mate, uh, you die of loneliness or whatever. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking when I programmed this. It probably wasn't good. <laughs> and then you pick a random neighbor and you will produce an offspring with that neighbor if you have one. And so the offspring's x and y coordinates are going to be sort of skewed towards whichever parent is more fit, whichever parent has a higher fitness score. Uh, because the position, the x and y, actually corresponds directly to the fitness of a cell. So, you know, you'd want the offspring to be closer to whichever parent is more fit. And, of course, there's like a little mutation rate that I put in there just to keep things interesting. And, you know, so every time they mate, they'll create a new cell. If you want to mate but you don't have a neighbor, you die. And this, I find, actually keeps the simulation from going on infinitely which is nice because I hate having to fathom the infinite, so I make sure everything dies in the end. And then of course if you find the very highest fitness and all your offspring just stay on the same block you are, then, you know, I take care of that. As I said before, any two cells that are at the exact same spot, one of them dies. And that mutation rate, if I set it up high enough, it ensures that any offspring will be generally pretty far away from their parent. At least that way they can't all huddle around the exact same spot. So keeping these rules in mind, let's go ahead and run the simulation again. Yeah, so now you can see they're starting to break off and create their own little groups. I have it so that way you can actually see which cells are neighbors of which ones with the little graph because I do quite like looking at graphs that change. They're pretty, pretty. Yeah, look at all that. So there's the little loners on the edge, on the fringe, just like dying out. This, this little cluster is broken off. Oh, but then this one, oh, they abandoned their friend, man. But yeah, like it's like, it's like cotton candy. This automata is. You can see it like dissolving away and fizzling. But oh, they want to hang on. Oh, these guys came together. They might form a new colony, but no, they're. Yeah, and then the last little doodad dies off, and the algorithm is done. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So what's the use of this? Uh, there isn't really any, I don't know if there is any quote unquote useful cellular automata program, except maybe for Game of Life, uh, I don't know. You don't really calculate stuff with this, it's just fun to watch, fun to look at. Uh, so I decided to make a little video out of it. I thought that'd be pretty cool. So I'm going to run the algorithm one last time as I close out the video here. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving a like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, click the notification bell, or watch any of the other videos on the screen here. If you're interested in maybe messing around with my automata program, I will have a link to the GitHub in the description of this video. If you have any ideas for other videos, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, apart from that, I don't have too much else to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.